live streaming, is there a business there? Is live streaming a business? So I just got this text message, and there's just nothing you can call a person now. Uh, somebody's trying to buy... You want to give us, like, initials? An S. So they know. Yeah, they know. <laughs> uh, somebody's trying to buy a phone that just, you know, like this, again. So, see, I feel like I give back, right? I ask for annoying things. I'm right. the guy you ask, like, a random-ass question. You're like, what, what Android phone do I buy? Right. I answer that question. And he's, like, trying to purchase it, and he's like, somebody else told me that it might be because it got hacked. So now they just think the whole internet is hacked. Right. Like, if my credit card gets declined today, the internet got hacked. Oh, like, hey, that's what it is. Hey, like, tech friend, is there, like, another internet out there? <laughs> is that why my printer's not working? <laughs> so, yeah. I wonder if I should just tell people, like, you gotta get off Comcast. Make them change their whole internet account. Like, just start trolling people. So, Sean, lay it down for us. Like, why, like, what are the challenges with, like, a live streaming business? We had an app. It was called Blab. It had 4 million users. It, compl- like, we ended up turning it off for various reasons. Sure. What was our, like, final, like, hypothesis there? Well, I mean, look, there's two different things. One is, what does it take for you to build a successful business? So, like, for our product specifically, 4 million users was the number of people who had used the app, not who regularly used the app. So, like... We're not charging people. So those four million, they're all a cost. The only upside is, hey, they use it for free, they start to like it, they use it every day, and eventually when this thing gets big enough, we can maybe, you know, during during a live stream or during the replay, be able to run advertisements or find a business model that makes some money. So because only 10% uh, or less of the use of all the users stuck around and kept using it, uh, 10% was so low that it was like, we had tried many things to raise that number and it just wasn't budging. And so that was like, that's the fatal flaw of that business. It's like running a restaurant and you always lose 10 cents a dish. It's like, you're, if, the, if you can't figure out a way to sell it profitably, then it's not gonna work. I, I think the main thing I would say is, um, it's like some content is really good and some of it is interesting, but you can only win if whenever I turn the TV on, it's really awesome, highly produced or whatever, right? Like, just because there's now a cool way to do it, sure, that unlocks, like, a couple of new things. But I, I think, like, entertainment-wise, a lot has been figured out. We were hoping, we were wishing that basically, hey, this is live streaming, people are going to make all kinds of interesting content. You know, we, we did interesting things with recorded video, like YouTube. You have all these YouTubers, even short form, like Vine and all the Viners. We said, what will happen? Will there be live stream stars? Will there be people who are really good broadcasting and interacting with the audience in such a way that people keep coming back. And there were people who were good. There were people who tried really hard, uh, but at the same time, their audience didn't take off like this. And it didn't take off on any live streaming app because of the fact that, hey, I have to stop what I'm doing in my life to watch this guy live. And that trade-off was not good enough. There was too many things that I could just do on demand that I didn't need to regularly stop my life schedule to go watch a live stream. It seemed to this day that's the case. There's a guy, I remember the, when I knew live streaming as like just generic live streaming is not going to work as a uh, as a business it'll have to sort of shift and be something be something slightly different is when um, on Facebook Live, Facebook was pushing Facebook Live so hard and they had a guy climbing the Trump Tower just using <laughs> like yeah. uh, basically like suction cups or something. And I was like, this is incredible. This guy might die. This has like everything. It's like Trump. It's like timely. It's on Facebook Live, broadcasted to everybody. So it's not like everybody needs to download this app. Feed, it's the right. first thing on everybody's feed. He's literally doing a death-defying stunt, and we don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's really good live. It's like, if it was recorded, I would kind of know, all right, this already happened. And there was like 45,000 people watching it, and that number didn't go up. It just stayed at 45,000. And then it started to decline. And it's, it's that same thing. 45,000 is not that big of a number for like, like, I think there's there's a place like Long Tail, right? Like So a car chase that in LA, like on TV, it's very common to see a car chase twice a week. Like that's a normal kind of newsworthy item. And I think there's like that. Like live streaming is going to fight like the reality TV, like trash TV world. Because yeah. like that's kind of like it's hard to make like you need – production quality to like attract people now is nfl broadcast broadcasting into twitter is that considered live streaming because mm-hmm. that gets two million yeah. people if produced it's been built up and there's storylines and like how much stuff happens about the nfl like how much story do i know like 
You know, like I should clarify that live streaming is not like oh live streaming. It was a new work. wave of it, right? Like it's, the Paris go America. Yeah, the, the new wave. So let's let's take out like live sports streaming. That's obviously working. Yeah. Live breaking Oscars news. and stuff like that. That'll, breaking news. That'll all work. Great. So, so where does Twitch fall into that? Is that so, old streaming or is that? No, that's in the new wave. But the the cool thing about Twitch was Twitch is is more like the watching NFL on Twitter Correct. than it is like. Uh, me sitting there on Periscope, streaming my my bedroom and trying to be entertaining. I still think it takes this. It's a game, right? Meaning it takes a mic, a setup, some quality. Like, you have to, like, like there has to be some quality to it. If it's, like, me in my garage, like, that's not, like... Well, even then, if you're, if you're, say we put in this effort, right? We could be live streaming this right now. We're not going to. Why? Because nobody's going to leave their life. Right people aren't going to do that, right? And that'll always be the problem with that. So I think there's definitely going to be a space for it. The question in, our, in everybody's mind, the reason there was a gold rush towards it was... Is this something that's gonna be not just new, but big and new? Big as in like YouTube level of a product, right? Like is there gonna be a, like is this gonna be a really big wave or is it gonna be an, a niche thing that exists and is successful in some ways, but it's not a new standalone network? It seems like the challenge with live streaming is it live, like it's like all other content on the internet, but with like a slight difference. Like all content on the internet is like all tweets are bad, all YouTube videos are bad, all websites are bad, and then because you have these big, it's like the content is modular, like the platform based on user behavior can figure out what's a good piece of content and service it to you. And because live is like this raw feed coming at you, it's really hard to put the interesting thing in front of you. It's, it's, it's not even that hard, right? Because you can see what people are watching right now and just show it to you. So it's not that it's hard to figure out what's good. It's just that the cost for me to watch it is not the same as me seeing a bad tweet, right? Right, and and so like that's the that's the difference is to in order to try it, it's like when I, it's like why people don't listen to podcasts because the cost of trying it yeah. is like I got to a figure it all out, but b I have to listen to this thing for an hour, right? Yeah. There's, no, there's no nibble, there's no bite like you can get with a photo or text or you know like those, those I actually things. think it's gonna end up working, and I think we're in like let's say plateau two mm -hmm. or three of this chain, and I think that like people like everyone is looking for the quick win, like they want. YouTube right away, right? They want to, okay, this format comes out and it's just instantly gold, but you look at it, it takes 10, 15 years to like really brew up like, what's good, how does it work, what's the format, the technologies have caught up, but like, the way I see it is, if two or three generations of kind of these plateaus happen, and if there is a moment where I knew that if I turned on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, and I'm just seeing where my friends are, where the people I care about are, or even if I look, you know, even if it's somebody that doesn't know me, even if it's kind of unidirectional, and it was always there, and there was like a lot of content, I would go to it and check stuff out, but it would have to be there, and I think that maybe, you know, we're gonna get to a point where like, everything will just be live. People will just be connected on that scale, and I think a percentage of them will want to broadcast it, like they do in other mediums. Like, people broadcast their thoughts on Twitter, daily on blogs monthly or whatever right like there's this long form i think people will be available by live streaming i think it will be broadcasting but i think it will take just more like what would happen if all your friends were like if all your friends were on blab like had been would it have been interesting for you just like every day come home and check it out would it have become a part of your life like if if, if you were the hundredth person in and not person one right like yeah sure sure i, I think the the, the question of like, will it work or not work? Is it good or not good? It's, it's hard, right? So what's your, what's yeah. your definition of working, right? Today, it's already a great feature of Facebook. It's a great feature on top of Twitter. It's, it's fantastic when it, like, is it, is it like, is Periscope's as a standalone thing or Facebook Live as a standalone thing really that important? Maybe not, but as a feature on top of these other networks, it's great right now. And then maybe as either cameras get better, we're all wearing Snapchat okay. spectacles, yeah, exactly. or like you there's got... a GoPro in every room, or something. There's a drone following there's a, you exactly. around. Exactly, a drone flies. that you can get to follow you around. Now, all of a sudden, it might be viable. Today, it's too much friction, too much work for the average person to go do. They don't have right. the motivation to do it. What am I going to watch? Exactly. Right? I could watch Netflix. I could watch YouTube. I could watch... It's competing for attention against 10 things that are either just as good or better, and way more convenient. I think that, uh, you know, if we went through a 10x with this wave, there's another wave that's another 10x. I mean, 10x, more people will be exposed to it, will do it, will be a part of it. I think we're going to see a lot more interesting content. And it's just going to fragment other things. Like, <clears throat> it's not like there's always good stuff on TV. A lot of times there's shitty stuff on TV. Mm -hmm. And I might turn to this, right? Like, Twitch. That's a good example of, like, people kind of go one after the other. 
if it's the Game of Thrones episode, you leave Twitch and you go watch that. But then there's other time to fill in, so... I don't know. We'll see what happens. Yeah. I, I think anyone who says oh, it, it, live streaming sucks, or live streaming is the best, or live streaming fails, yeah. or live streaming succeeds, it's like... It's not it's, it's not that black or white. It's not a useful thing. And it's sort of like... I, right now, I think the thing that sums up where we are is no one has ever recommended to me, yo, you know, you have to check out on Facebook Live or Periscope. Like, I've never heard those words get uttered. Yeah. So, until someone says that... Yeah, I mean, just look at the audiences. Do you see anyone's audience breaking out and going huge? Oh, man, he was, <laughs> he was broadcasting six months ago. He was at this audience. Now he's here. And next six months, he's here. Like, that's what you want to see is somebody who's getting a growing live audience. Um, not just because, like, right when they first join the platform, they get an initial spike. But every time yeah. they do it, they get this, more. This is, they get a if you audience. want to be a live streamer, this is the best time to be in right now. The hype is done. Yeah. You're in this slow growth phase if you believe that this is the industry you get in now you've actually spent two years like doing this every day whatever however often whatever your show format is and i think that you're going to find the medium that works whether it's facebook or twitch or you know whatever it is like there's going to be many places where it might make sense but i, I think that like if you're in it for the long haul and you really believe in it this is actually the time to get in yeah. not like yesteryear when it was the the hype cycle right the hard part is if you're a star or you're talented right and you have the option there. I mean, there's podcasts that get a million downloads, right? There's YouTube videos that can Correct. get millions of hits. And now, and you, you know, you could post a single photo on Instagram or a single Snapchat and get 300,000 views. And you could go live and you'd get 3,000 viewers. But I just think the numbers are different. For an hour. Like, I know, but the, this is the calculus. Because they're going to say, it cost, this one takes an hour. Mm -hmm. The other one's a 10-second snap. Mm -hmm. If I'm getting my message to people faster and Correct. more people, that's what I want to do. So I think a lot of people, I think that's where a lot of people's like, you know, they make, they do that equation and that's where they opt out. And who's the guy that said they wanted a thousand person tribe over, uh, you know, a million person or whatever, sure, yeah. right? Like, I mean, so there, there's, there's some stuff there where I think you're going to have pockets of people like that are interested, like mukbang, right? Like this is a perfect live streaming phenomenon. It's not big here, but somewhere else in the country, you know, in the world that that's huge. This is not going to be on TV. Like, it's not going to make it past like some board executive going, what the fuck is this? Maybe they'll figure it out later. Yes, gay dad TV exists. Jerry Springer exists. So <laughs> anything's possible. Someone eating, you know, at eight a.m. I feel like that that could be on. Yeah, maybe that's on. But but you know, like is live streaming those specialty channels of TV like Cook Food Network, right? Like is, is that basically like kind of like the best goal of like a live streaming channel or something like that to turn into some kind of like force like that where. Yes, there's 100,000 people that want this every single day, all day, because this is their life. Have, have you ever watched the uh, Nom, I think it is, the the YouTube, the guy who started YouTube uh, started something called Nom, it's live streaming. Is it the food? food? I'd like yeah, that. I, I think, I mean, food porn makes a ton of sense. Like, you have tasty, Have you watched it? I've seen, I've seen some of it, and it's just basically like the mukbang genre, which is just people in Korea who are eating food, and they have mics set up to hear, like, the lip smacking. And it's like, it's it, it makes sense though, because like in the same way that like live porn <laughs> makes sense because like it taps into this like super innate thing that like people are interested in food, sex, like I think Twitch works because you're watching basically television, like video games are theater. See, I think Twitch works because they're doing things you can't, mm -hmm. right? Like I can't play the game that well. And it's like such a high level of skill sometimes, or sometimes it's just entertaining. Like they're really bad at it, but like they have a personality. Game itself is entertaining, which I think is missing from many other things. Like I guess if you're really into the lip smacking of food eaters, <laughs> then sure. But I, you know, let's it's, what would Food Network not put on TV? Like they're food missing Network out on amazing stuff. Like, like yeah. no, I mean Chopped is you know these shows on Food Network they're perfect. Like they they get it. They get that. Chopped might be the perfect show. <laughs> Chopped might be the perfect show. It's just like, they get it, they know they're not supposed to reach 50 million people with that show, but there's a million diehards, I don't know what the numbers are, I'm making this up right now, but like, there's literally some diehards that are like, There's oh, a food, ne food, food network exec somewhere being like, that number's too that number, low. <laughs> so, sorry, two million. 